this is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at Instructor, which is an instruction fine-tuned text embedding model. Okay, and we'll also look at a demo of Instructor. Now you have word to vec and other word embedding models. So how is Instructor different from them? So Instructor can generate text embeddings, which is tailored to any task. Okay. For example, if you have an input over here, who sings the song Love Story? Okay. Now, based on this input, if the instruction is find duplicate questions and you have a question corpus, then instructor would generate embeddings for this particular task. Okay. And the output could be this one. Who is the singer of the song Love Story? Okay. So basically it generates task specific embeddings. Okay, from your corpus as well as the input. Now, if it was retrieve information retrieval, like retrieving documents from Wikipedia, then for that task, it generates input embeddings for in embeddings for the input as well as for your corpus. And this is the, your output. Okay. Now, if it was classify the question, so a questions topic. So this is like a classification, right? So for the classification, it would again generate a different embedding based on the input over here. And you know, here it categorizes, you have a classifier, which will categorize it as, you know, belonging to a certain category music over here. Okay. So the key idea is that given any kind of input, okay, your instruction is also attached to the input and based on the instruction, it generates your embeddings. Now the instruction encodes your task and domain. It could be also domains like science, finance, all those things. Okay. Let's look at the architecture of the instructor model from the paper. Okay. So the instructor model is based on GTR models as backbone. So it is based on single encoder architecture. So GTR stands for generalizable T5 based dense retrievers based on this particular paper. I will put the link of this paper. Okay. In the description of the video, you can check out the idea here is that Given an input text X and a task instruction I X, instructor encodes their concatenation. Okay. I X concatenated with X. Then they generate fixed size task specific embedding by applying mean pooling to the last hidden representation. So over the tokens in X. Okay. So generalized uh, T5 based retrieval models are, uh, you know, initialized from T5 models. Okay. So the idea is over here, it is like this. You have the instruction plus uh, your input, which is given to a T5 uh, or the GTR model. Okay. Which generates this embedding. Okay. That is the idea over here. And this embedding is fixed side and task specific. Okay. Now what is the training objective? So the idea is that uh, the wide variety of tasks are formulated as a text to text problem of distinguishing good, bad candidate outputs. Okay. So given an input X where a training sample corresponds to the tuple X, I, X, Y, I, Y. Okay. With I, X and I, Y are instructions associated with X and Y respectively. Now let's go and understand from this figure what it means. Okay. So given a text X who sings the song love story. Given an instruction IX find duplicate questions. Okay. Now X and find duplicate questions, which is this instruction, this find duplicate questions is concatenated. This instruction is concatenated with this input X. Okay. So this is your first part over here. Okay. X comma X. Now what is Y comma I Y? Y comma I Y in this case could be Y is, uh, this is about finding duplicate questions, right? So who is the singer of the song love story is your Y. Okay. And here uh, the instruction could be like, uh, find duplicate questions again over here or a rep generate a representation for this, uh, question. Okay. And the input uh, Y is, uh, this over here, right? So given this particular representation, right? What is done over here is that, okay. You create basically, uh, basically how do you get the, uh, whether this particular Y comma, uh, I Y is good for X comma I, uh, I X. How can you get that for that? You need to do a cosine similarity between the embedding, which comes out of instructor, right? 
So cosine similarity of embedding of I X concatenated with X embedding of I Y concatenated with Y. Okay. So you can generate this cosine similarity for, uh, you know, positive and negative pairs. And then you maximize the similarity between positive pairs and minimize the negative pairs. Okay. Where K over here denotes the number of negative pairs. So, so specifically the training objective becomes a soft max function over here. Okay. And where this gamma is actually the soft max temperature. And this is a uh, B is nothing but the union of all the uh, positive and negative samples over here. So you are trying to optimize the similarity between positive pairs and minimize the uh, similarity between uh, negative pairs basically. That's the idea over here. Okay. In this way, instructor will be trained. Okay. So basically you have a pair of uh, your instruction with your input your instruction with your outputs. Okay. You have positive pairs and negative pairs and then you try to optimize the similarity between positive pairs. That is the idea. So for this, you need this data set, right? So the data set over here is, uh, they construct a collection of 330 data set with instructions across diverse task categories and domains. They call this as multitask embedding with instruction. So what they do is that they build this particular data set by combining 300 data sets from supernatural instructions with 30 data set from existing collection designed for embedding training. Okay. So this super NI or supernatural instruction data set comes with natural language instructions, but it doesn't have positive or negative pairs associated with this particular instruction. So for that, what they do, they construct these pairs by using sentence T5 embeddings. Okay. For the classification data set, they calculate the pairwise cosine similarity between examples based on input text embeddings. An example XI with a high similarity to XJ is used to create a positive pair. If both examples have the same class label and negative pair, if the labels differ, that is the idea. Okay. So for example, if you have a sentiment classification data set, there will be positive uh, sentiment samples. There will be negative sentiment samples, right? So from the positive uh, uh, sentiment samples, you find samples which are similar to each other and you create one positive pair and negative is uh, samples are nothing but uh, those samples which are belonging to negative uh, sentiment. Okay. In that way you can create uh, this thing and here the instruction could be classify the sentiment. Okay. So that is how they have created this particular uh, data set. They have examples over here also. Let's go to that uh, examples. Okay. Where are the examples over here? I saw something over here. Yeah. So for example, if it is Amazon polarity classification, if it is the data set, the instruction is represent the Amazon comment for classifying the sentence as positive or negative. Okay. That is the instruction, right? And input is a sentence from your data set. So for this particular task, what they would have done is that some, uh, for a positive set of, uh, you know, sentences, they would have created, uh, you know, pairs of positive sentences and negative sentences with along with positive sentences. Okay. That is the idea over here. Now this is for uh, say question answering, right? So here what happens is that if you look the query instruction is represent the finance query for retrieving supporting documents. But what is the target over here? I represent the finance document for retrieval. So here you see the instruction difference between the input and the output. Right? Okay. So what they are saying is that uh, they are representing the ins uh, instruction over here. If you go back to that particular uh, paragraph, let's go back there. So in the data set, they are standardizing the instruction consistent across all uh, data set. So what they are saying is that uh, unified instruction format. So every instruction should have a text type specifies the type of input text. It could be query. It could be, uh, you know, document, right? Uh, the for question answering task, the input type could be query and the input type for the target is a document. There could be a task objective, which could be like classification retrieval, right? But it is optional. And then there could be your domain, which is also optional. Okay. So the final instruction takes the following format represent the domain text type for task objective and then the input. Okay. So if you go to appendix eight over here. Yeah. So here are the examples. So if it is for a stack exchange data set represent the 
stack exchange question so the domain is stack exchange type is question and the task is retrieving duplicate questions and then you have your input right so that is an example over here so these are the various da uh, data sets uh, for based on categories for retrieval you have for summarization you have for clustering pair classification classification prompt retrieval and so on okay so they claim that uh, this embeddings have improved the performance over uh, baselines right over existing state of art uh, this particular uh, you know instructor has a relative gain over uh, existing uh, retrievers basically okay it's existing gtr based uh, retrievers that is what they have shown over here so retrieve stands for retrieval clustering uh, this pair stands for uh, pair classification classification summarization okay they have shown that this model improves the performance okay so now that we had a quick look at uh, what is instructor or let's go to a demo and let's see how it works okay so uh, they have this github page for instructor embedding uh, where uh, they have given instructions on how to do the setup let's try it out in a google collab demo so i have actually um, cloned the repository i have installed the requirements all the uh, necessary libraries then what i have done is that i have installed this instructor embedding okay then i instantiate a model from instructor embedding import instructor so the model is instantiated now what are the things which you can do with it so one of the things which you can do is that you can generate cosine similarity between sentences okay so for example if you have this particular sentence so represent the science sentence and this is your input sentence right okay and an optional uh, task id or something over here right and you have a financial sentence over here right represent the financial statement and the federal reserve you have another financial statement over here and another science sentence over here so when you do cosine similarity of the embeddings the science sentence should have highest similarity with the science sentence and financial sentence similarly okay and dissimilarity between science sentence financial sentence should be high so how do you generate embeddings all you have to do is that you are from instructor embedding you uh, import instructor you create a model over here right instructor you call this particular this thing you create a model and then you just embeddings is equal to model encode the sentences embeddings b is equal to model encoding the second sentence pair okay and then you can generate cosine similarity from sklearn learn matrix pairwise you can import uh, cosine similarity and you can generate the similarities now let's print the similarities so as expected the sign sentence is more similar to the sign sentence okay that is why you know this value is high zero and one is high okay zero over here and one is high okay similarly one and zero okay one basically represent this financial statement this should have higher similarity to which one basically this you know financial statement this should be high that is why this value is high okay that is the idea over here right and uh, this science uh, uh, sentence is not similar to financial that is why these values are low over here okay now what is the size of this embedding which has been generated so it is 768 dimension so for this entire sentence is represented with 768 uh, vectors basic uh, your 7 uh, 768 vector okay because we have two sentences it is 2 comma 768 over here now what are the other things you can do you can do clustering for example i want to cluster these medical sentences so i say represent the domain is medical sentence okay for clustering right so i have created this instruction this is my text okay so i have created five sentences over here i create embeddings for this five sentence okay then i create a clustering model over here and i fit it on these embeddings i want three clusters over here because i know that there are three clusters over here because the first two sentences are related to gastroenterology another one is related to neurology and then you have something related to your orthopedics okay last two sentences and it kind of does clustering well over here and it says that the first two sentences belong to a certain group 
the third sentence is different and the fourth and fifth sentences are another group over here this is too small a set to actually evaluate clustering but this is just an example okay so you can cluster the embeddings you can also do some kind of uh, information retrieval okay so again you have a query so represent the wikipedia question for retrieving support document is the instruction my text is who is the founder of ferrari okay and the corpus is every document i am representing over here for retrieval right so represent the wikipedia document for retrieval and i have a set of text over here and i can now i can create query embeddings and corpus embeddings using model.encode query and corpus and i can do a cosine similarity between them okay then i can retrieve the document with the highest cosine similarity so it correctly actually it extracts that uh, you know who is the founder of ferrari it extracts this document ferrari is an italian luxury sports and founded in italy founded by enzo ferrari so it retrieves this particular text okay so you can use this for query retrieval for uh, your clustering for classification for uh, cosine similarity between embeddings okay so you can use instructor for these various uh, tasks so i kind of like the idea behind instructor uh, of actually creating instruction uh, you know based embeddings again instructor and domain based embeddings on the input for different tasks okay your task is encoded in the instruction so i like this idea over here and uh, this is a very interesting paper and uh, very useful embeddings maybe a larger uh, evaluation needs to be done for your use cases so they also explain over here how you can uh, you know train these embeddings how you can train an instructor for your task objective for your domain right for your text type um, they also explain that over here you can check that out okay so if you like this video on instructor please like share subscribe to the channel i'll be putting the link to this particular uh, github i'll be putting the link of uh, this paper right as well as uh, you know uh, uh, this explanation on instructor which is present over here along with the google collab demo of the same the demo is quite simple it is just the code which is present over here i've just changed the input a little bit but you can still check out see you in another video Happy learning.